Do you remember this? Look at it, all that power in this tiny little box. Yeah, I was so happy when I got my Mac Studio. DaVinci Resolve was running so super smoothly, but that was three years ago. And back then we were all on DaVinci Resolve 18, right? Almost no AI and neural engine stuff. But now DaVinci Resolve 20, it has AI and super crazy powerful features everywhere. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of those features are super useful, but my computer doesn't really like them. It's really struggling, especially when I use a combination of effects and AI features. So right now, I'm actually back to where I was before I bought my Mac Studio, finding workarounds and fixes to ease the frustration of choppy playback and, well, crashes also sometimes. So here are some tips and tricks to make DaVinci Resolve 20 run smoother and faster. Okay, and the first one is a tough one. Let's take a look at the minimum system requirements of DaVinci Resolve 20. This is for Windows, but I'm not on Windows, so just pause the video if you are, so you can check them out. And then this is for Mac. Now, what stands out is Apple Silicon-based computer. Check, because I have an M1 Mac Studio. And then 8 gigabytes of system memory, or 16 when you're using Fusion. My Mac Studio has 32. So, look, I don't know if I maybe have to clean up my Mac, or maybe the M1 chip is just not powerful enough anymore, or maybe 32 gigabytes of RAM is not enough anymore. So, if you have an M2 or M3 chip and 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM, let me know in the comments how DaVinci Resolve 20 is running. Are you struggling too or not so much? But yeah, anyway, the thing is, if you're on the low end of these specs, it seems like there's no other way than to upgrade your computer or to buy a new one. You won't be able to run DaVinci Resolve 20 properly if your specs are too low. That's just how it is. On my 2018 MacBook Pro, DaVinci Resolve 20 doesn't run. I don't even have to try. So yeah. Now buying a new computer or upgrading it is a drastic solution, right? So what if you've installed DaVinci Resolve 20 and it's not running and you don't wanna buy a new computer? Are you stuck now? No, luckily you're not. You can always revert back to an older version of Resolve. On the Blackmagic support page, you can scroll down here and then find all the older versions. Now, of course, this is not a solution to make DaVinci Resolve 20 run better, but you know, if nothing else works, this is your only option. It's probably the only way to keep using Resolve until you upgrade your computer or buy a new one. And trust me, I know it's not what you want to hear. I also don't want to buy a new computer, but that's just how it is. But luckily, there are also some things that you can try to make DaVinci Resolve 20 run smoother and faster, and some fixes for when it crashes, for example. Now, I do want to emphasize that just because these fixes work for me, for my computer, or for the configuration I have, doesn't mean they'll work for you and for your computer configuration. But definitely try them, because you never know. Okay, so a problem I've been having lately is render crashes. So after a long day of editing, I want to render my video, and then after, I don't know, 10 minutes of rendering, when it's an effects heavy video, it just freezes and done. Super annoying and just starting the render again doesn't work because it will just freeze again. Now, the solution is super simple. Just restart your computer because I guess it clears all the memory and then it's just fine. When I restart my computer before I render, it doesn't freeze. And you know, there's probably another way to clear the memory, but I don't know, so if you know, let me know in the comments. But for now, I'll just restart my computer, especially after a long day of editing, you know, when the memory gets clogged up with all kinds of stuff. Okay, and then we have render cache. And render cache before Resolve 20 was something I only used like sporadically, once every month or something. But now, Resolve 20, I have to use it more and more. So render cache basically pre-renders effects so that when you play the timeline it doesn't have to compute all those effects in real time and it results in super smooth playback. You can set it to user or smart and for a long time I was only using the user settings which gives you a bit more control and I didn't need it on all the effects so you know it allows you to choose which effects you want Resolve to pre-render. But now, more and more, I'm also using the smart setting, which lets Resolve do everything automatically. And then if you see a blue line on top of the effect, it means it's rendered. A red line means it's not rendered yet. 
Now, the downside is that every time you change something in that part of the video, it has to render all the effects again. And sometimes even if you change something in another part of the video, it's also gonna have to re-render the already rendered parts. So, you know, you're gonna get smooth playback, but you're gonna have to wait for renders to finish all the time. But you know what? That actually doesn't have to be a bad thing because while you're waiting for your renders to finish, that's the perfect time to look for some music for your next video, right? And what better place to do it than Audio, the sponsor of this video. Audio offers real music from real artists and you can use all their music for personal and client work. New tracks are also being added all the time so there's always something new to discover. For every mood, for every type of video, intro music or background music, it doesn't matter, you'll find the perfect song. And the cool thing is that besides a pro subscription, they also offer a lifetime plan. Now, it doesn't include all the AI features, but you do get unlimited downloads forever for a one-time payment. And right now, if you use my link in the description and code Yoris199, you'll get a special offer to add on lifetime sound effects for an extra $199. So just go to their website, listen to some music, because maybe audio is exactly what you're looking for. Okay, and now back to the video. Okay, and this is more like a DIY solution, but it works for me. I try to, if possible, put all the effects like third-party titles, animations, motion graphics and things like that on the same track. And then I can just turn them on and off. And you can also use this button here to turn on and off effects. But using tracks gives you a bit more control, right? Because you can use different tracks for different effects, for example. I don't know, it works for me. And then we have proxies and optimized media. Both of these features are super useful for when your computer is struggling because they allow you to generate lower resolution media and then Resolve will use those low resolution media while editing. And it really works, but there's something you need to check first before you use these features. It's super important. So in the project settings, you can adjust the settings for proxies and optimized media, right? And if you're on a Mac, for example, ProRes, which is a file type, is a great choice, but if you're on a Windows machine, DNXHR, I don't know how to pronounce that, is probably a better choice. So, you know, changing these settings depending on which operating system you have could improve the performance even more. And number seven is a simple one, just lower the playback resolution. Now look, a few years ago in Resolve 18 and 19, this wasn't my favorite feature to improve performance. It didn't always work very well. Well, for me at least, for my computer. But now in Resolve 20, I don't know, I feel like they've improved it or something. I lower the playback resolution all the time and it really works. Because unlike a few years ago, it also improves the performance of all the effects you use. So I don't know if it's improved or not, but it works now. And then another thing that's often forgotten in the project settings is this here, the location of the files, especially cache render files. And ideally, you have your cache on a separate SSD. Professionals often have a separate SSD for, you know, their operating system, cache and video files. So if you have separate SSDs, don't forget these settings. Render in place is also super useful because sometimes there's a clip that has a ton of effects and animated titles and it messes up the playback for everything else, for the whole timeline, just a short clip. And so, you know, when I'm done with that clip, I just right click and do render in place and it will render that clip. So bake in all the effects and done. It'll run super smooth as if it doesn't have any effects. So it's a quick way to target those problem clips. <laughs> Okay, and then finally, maybe also something you don't want to hear, all of you who are using the free version, buy the studio version. Because the free version is a bit limited when it comes to performance. The studio version offers smoother playback for high resolution media and also optimized GPU acceleration for faster performance, especially on large projects. Now, is buying DaVinci Resolve Studio gonna solve all of your performance problems all of a sudden? No, of course not, especially if your the computer specs are too low. If they don't meet the minimum system requirements, you know, buying Resolve Studio is not gonna fix anything. So your computer specs are still the first thing you should be looking at, in my opinion. Check those minimum system requirements again. I'm probably gonna be okay until, I don't know, the end of this year, I hope, but eventually I'm also gonna have to buy a new computer. There's no other way. That's technological advancement for you. Powerful features 
need a powerful computer. That's just how it is. But I hope some of these tips help. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.